Oof. Ignition angle or ignition timing is next. It sounds simple, but boy is that a loaded one. Maybe not as bad as your wife asking if these pants make her butt look big, but there's sure a lot to this one. Basically put, ignition advance is the angle relative to TDC, our top dead center, where the spark plug will spark and start the combustion process. Too early and you get knock, too late and you have poor performance and high exhaust gas temps or EGTs. Finding that ideal timing is like getting the ingredients to the special sauce at your favorite restaurant. There's a lot of science to it, but so much can seem like black magic instead. And on a turbo car, finding that perfect balance between boost and timing can be quite heavenly. But getting it wrong, and you have terrible knock causing blown head gaskets, holes in your pistons, bent rods, and other things not so fun. Luckily, these ECUs have very nice knock sensing and cylinder-specific knock adaption to help out. So, without damaging the engine, you can experiment a bit without so much worry. And tuning the timing can be a process of moving the whole curve up or down, logging and monitoring the results, then adjusting again. Then, as you find the ideal timing for a specific range, you keep narrowing down the range you're adjusting. Amazingly, on 997 and 996 turbo engines, a single degree of timing can be worth 20 to 25 horsepower. What you talking about? What you talking about? What you talking about? What you, what you, what you talking about? What? So, we really want to be in that ideal range when adjusting the timing. You'll want to look for sharp decreases in timing during a run. That's typically the ECU adjusting for knock and sharply dropping the timing to protect the engine. It will ramp it back in over a couple combustion cycles, then drop it again if it senses knock. Even though the ECU is protecting your engine, the knock adaption tends to overcorrect to immediately stop the knock event and potential chaos. So you'll more want to adjust the timing till there's very little to no adaption going on. Now, timing does have ideal ranges. I had read a while back in the four stroke performance handbook that the ideal timing was somewhere in the 18 to 21 degrees before TDC. Now that will change according to compression ratio, octane of fuel, temps, combustion design, and boost. But there is still an ideal. So just reducing the timing way down so you can ramp up the boost without knocking doesn't necessarily make more power. And since timing and boost both directly relate to the torque being produced, you will find optimal boost versus timing settings. Many times, an engine is far happier with lower boost, allowing the timing to be in a more ideal range, giving you better overall performance, lower intake air temps, lower stress on the engine, and what we refer to as a happy engine. Well, Discussing timing alone could be an entire book or thesis paper, and most certainly has been. And since this is more on what these values mean versus a total tuning video, let's move on. Injection time. This one's not so bad. The injection time, or injector MS, which stands for milliseconds, is the amount of time your fuel injectors are open in two complete revolutions of the engine for sequential injection engines and one complete revolution of the engine on batch fire engines. DFI engines are a whole new batch of crazy when it comes to injection time, since they'll go through many different modes of operation that utilize very different firing patterns than our port injected cars. So the injection time should relate very closely to your load. If it's too far off, you'll typically also notice your fuel terms are wacky, trying to keep up with the deviation. And your load relates very closely to your torque. Thus, the dyno video we did where you can back calculate your horsepower based on your injection time, knowing other factors such as injector size, brake specific fuel consumption, or BSFC, fuel pressure, fuel type like pump versus E85, and number of fuel injectors. You'll also want to monitor your injection time to be sure you're not running out of injector. The ECU will continue to try to put more fuel in by driving the trim sky high, even to the point where the duty cycle is well above 100%. But you can't produce more than you have. And when that's the case, you'll either need to lower the boost, get bigger fuel injectors, check and or raise the fuel pressure, and make sure that the fuel pump or lines aren't causing the restriction. 
too large of an injector can also be an issue on low speed and idle performance, since fuel injectors maintain a linear flow rate relative to injection time only down to the 1.0 millisecond range or so. Below that, they become very unstable and give you unpredictable results. We see this all the time with customers installing ID1300 and ID1700 injectors on their 997.1 turbos and wanting to run pump fuel. At idle, you'll see the injection time all the way down in the 0.4 millisecond range. And with the non-linearity of these injectors in that range, the O2s go bonkers chasing the trims around, causing the engine to stall when the trims shut off on fuel catch after fuel cut on diesel. We talked about this at length in our video, Engineering Explained, Fuel Injectors, Pumps, and More, talk about everything Tech more. Talk. So be sure to check it out. Camshaft Deviation Bank 1 and Bank 2. Ha! Huh. We get to cover two in one shot, and these are pretty straightforward. Well, as straightforward as something this technical may be able to get. Anyhow. These two values are describing what the computer is expecting to see from a perfectly timed camshaft to the actual camshaft timing. On a 996 and 997.1 turbo, these are for the intake cams only, where a 2010 GT3 RS has sensors and adjustments on the exhaust cams as well. Unfortunately, the 996 and 997.1 turbo don't even have sensors on the exhaust side, so if those are out of time, you'll have to figure out the hard way if they're timed wrong. These values are only allowed plus or minus 10 degrees. Beyond that, they'll flag codes P0016, P0018, or P0020 for cam to crank synchronization errors. And anything beyond a few degrees difference between these two will cause your engine to run poorly, since the cam timing directly affects the volumetric efficiency, torque, load, then fuel trims. And if they're off too much side to side, one side of your engine is performing very differently from the other side. The cams in the earlier example are minus 1.48 degrees and minus 4.44 degrees. So even though both are slightly retarded, the difference between them is about 3 degrees. Where if one were plus 1.48 and the other minus 4.44, you'd be out nearly 6 degrees and the engine would suffer. So if you're having a hard time setting your cam timing by the shop manual procedure and a dial indicator to find TDC, head over to our web store and grab a crank lockdown tool. Your engine will be happy you did since you'll be able to nail the cam timing every time. Actual camshaft angle, bank one and bank two, along with nominal camshaft angle, bank one and two are the next values we'll see in this log. While bank one refers to cylinders one, two, and three, bank two is referring to cylinders four, five, and six. Ha! You didn't think I had enough fingers, did you? The actual camshaft angle is telling us how far it's being adjusted from its base value, and not the actual angle in the housing, as that'd be moving so fast it'd make my eyes go wonky. The nominal camshaft angle is referring to a set point by the ECU or a target camshaft angle. Ideally, you'd want the actual angle to be dead on top of the nominal camshaft angle values. But given that they're flying around in the engine and being controlled by hydraulic solenoids and actuators, they're doing a pretty good job just trying to keep up. However, if they deviate a bit too far for a bit too long, you'll get a cam error code like a P0011 or a P0021, depending on if it's bank one or bank two. While these target values are tunable, on a stock engine, you're not gonna find much there. With some upgraded cams, port work, altered intake manifold, or other mods, you can rework the cam target tables to have a more ideal port curve. However, these are generally being logged to look for slipped cams on the 997.1 turbo or even bad rings on the ends of the cams causing leakage between the hydraulic passages. And by monitoring or graphing these values, you can see if you have a lazy camshaft that may not be flagging an error just yet. A value of zero corresponds to a fully retarded cam, or a higher value will be the camshaft advancing. 996 turbos, 997.1 turbos, and even GT3s all have differing amounts of total cam movement, so you'll need to be familiar with your own vehicle to know exactly what to look for here. 